Welcome back to Vox Podcast, the weekly pseudo-academic roundtable of pop culture analysis with drinking and swearing. My name is Christopher Maverick, but you can call me Mav, and I am once again here with the entire crew, Katya and Wayne and Hannah. How's it going, guys? Hey. Uh, it's going. It's, <laughs> you know, I feel like every time I answer how's it going in 2020, I'm just like, it causes me to reflect deeply on like, how is it going, Katya? Is it going well? Is it going poorly? What, is it, what do those words mean anymore? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh no! First show, first show after the beginning of the holiday seasons. How was everybody's Thanksgiving? I don't okay. celebrate Thanksgiving. Should be worse. <laughs> I had we. I had West Coast. I, had, I I I I West Coaster cannot go home to the West Coast for the rest of 2020. Actually, this is the first year of my life I will have not spend a single day on the West Coast. Really? Yeah. I just realized that yeah. I always go home for at least. And for, 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 for people who have not been listening since the uh, early dawn of time, I'm originally from just outside of Portland, Oregon. Uh, have not lived there for 18 years, but I always go home. This is the first year I will not do that. So this is, but appropriately, we did, me and another uh, ex-West Coast kid who's also stranded in the Midwest, did West Coast Thanksgiving, which was crab and mussels and miscellaneous other seafood, which was delightful. You found crab and mussels in Michigan? Okay, sure. I mean, they're all from other places. Okay. They, were, yeah. they, were, yeah, they were frozen <laughs> and or airlifted. Yeah, they, were, they weren't native Michigan mussels. That's kind of no, what I was wondering. No, <laughs> no, no. Like, uh-uh, no. But yeah, so as far as, as, far as weird pandemic Thanksgivings could go. You know, it's pretty good, and I had pie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I had turkey. I, I I had I made a whole bigger deal. I don't know why. Um, uh, I posted pictures to Instagram and Facebook, which everybody liked, because I wasn't even thinking about it. Like I wasn't trying to make a big deal out of it. Um, you know, we're not trying so, to fl- turkey flex on us. No, uh, and in fact, <laughs> and, and, and so because it's weird because um, you know, obviously social distancing, pandemic, lockdown. So my Thanksgiving was um, me and my wife Stephanie. Has been on the show. It was just us. We just did a Thanksgiving dinner just the two of us and typically the last several years we've been we usually go actually last year we did a friendsgiving which is friends of ours but um but most years we go to her brother's house and it's a lot of her family and stuff and so i don't usually since thanksgiving is not my holiday i don't usually cook a turkey on thanksgiving myself i have in the past and i'm more likely to do one around thanksgiving just so we have stuff and so when i don't like um i personally prefer smoked turkey so i don't i don't like um i don't like roasting it in an oven um i have a dedicated uh grill smoker grill so it's been mentioned on the show before but for people who don't hang out in my backyard the way wayne does um i have three different barbecue grills because i'm very into the idea of barbecuing and so i've got one that is a smoker grill that i use rarely just for when i'm making um making something like a like an like a 12 or an 18 pound turkey so there's been times where i've had people over and i've just smoked a big turkey in the back of it and this time it was just the two of us so i had a six pound turkey breast that was it it was you know it's plenty of meat for two people and when i woke up thursday morning i just saw a bunch of other people were just posting oh i'm doing my preparations for um for thanksgiving and so people were posting pictures to facebook which i think was a nice communal thing you know i was like i want to be a part of that so i saw and and i i saw them on facebook and on instagram and you know I'm lazy, so I'm just going to do one post on Instagram and make it auto post. But <laughs> to, to Facebook, but um, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, but like people were, yeah, everybody. I, in fact, you were like you were you posted yeah. wait you posted pictures of like you were baking your mom's recipe for noodles or something uh, homemade noodles. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, mm. I want to be a part of the club, so I'm going to post pictures and and so I posted. Um, I had um, my wife take the picture with my cell phone of me like placing the, the turkey in my smoker grill. And, you know, and um, um, she had, she had already put the turkey rub on it. I, you know, I made a homemade rub for the outside of it. And then like I and like I posted pictures and people were just like, that's amazing. How do you do that? This is a big deal. And then I had friends took me, you're making such a fancy turkey. I'm like, no, I'm making a turkey just like everybody else. I just happen to cook mine outside. What? Why is this weird? Yeah, I, I got <laughs> yeah, a, a ridiculous number of likes and comments on on mine as well, which just surprised me. Um, yeah, I, it was it was a weird Thanksgiving. This is. Considering I am a man of a certain age, this is the first Thanksgiving I have not spent at home with my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's due to reasons beyond the pandemic. I probably wouldn't have gone anyway because of that stuff. But, Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, there there have been health issues, my my elderly parents or whatever. So this was going to be the year that I did. 
that anyway. So it was weird for me personally, just not having that. Mm-hmm. And you, and this kind of segues into what we're talking about today, which is traditions, because mm-hmm. this is going to affect Christmas traditions for me as well. Um, so it was kind of weird just not doing that routine. Uh, and, and the making the noodles is one of those things. Like I've helped mom do Thanksgiving dinner as long as I've been alive, standing in the kitchen in her way, I'm sure when I was six, to actually helping her with all the bits. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the homemade noodles, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're Appalachian, it's egg noodles, you know, boiled in, in broth. I mean, it's as simple as you get, but it's kind of the ultimate comfort food from my childhood for me. Mm-hmm. And since I wasn't going to be home, it's like, I'm going to make them. I, I, I have yeah. to do this. This is, this is my personal comfort thing today in an odd year that I'm having a tough time with. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I'm happy with the result. They were a little thick. They were a little chewy. They weren't quite the right texture. But be, and part but of that is my, my mom being a backwood Appalachian cook. Her recipe reads something along the lines of, so you start with some flour. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. my grandmother's recipes. Uh, might as well. So, I, so anyway, that, that's, that was a, a big part of me needing to do that this year. And, and I got a lot of responses. Some of those people who know my parents who have eaten my mom's noodles, who have commented on it, family. But also people I didn't expect at all. Like, oh, my mom used to make those. How do you do that? You know. So, it, yeah, it was a learning experience, and, and I I enjoyed that part of it. And I, I enjoyed the whole thing. My roommate and I and our little pod had some food here. Mm-hmm. So, and it was, it was you know, thoroughly enjoyable. Nice day. Yeah. What about you, Hannah? Uh, well, I as I said, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving because of all the reasons. But I, I don't like turkey. So I, I usually, um, I've replaced it since grad school with a early Christmas dinner featuring a goose in the Charles Dickens Thanksgiving style. Um, Tati actually has attended which is year. D- Dickens nice. giving. It is delightful yes. and wonderful. Mainly nice. lots of heavy food, some drinking, and being nerds. It's drinking? Yeah. You yeah. guys? <laughs> Uh, it is the Victorian way. And so, like, it, you know, it always <laughs> fell on, on the, you know, Thanksgiving weekend because that is kind of the last grad school, like, mm-hmm. gathering before people go home for the holidays because Duke has a terrible schedule in terms of the academic calendar, as many universities do. I mean, they all do. Um, and it's like, let's send everybody home for Thanksgiving. Uh, not this year. They ended before Thanksgiving, which was really awful, I think. Let's send everyone home before Thanksgiving um, and then bring them back for finals for two weeks and then send them back home again for Christmas. Yeah, um, yeah we do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's like a it's like a university weirdness of the academic calendar. I mean, that's the thing. But, I've never been home for Thanksgiving. I mean, I think that's which. Well, maybe we should get into this, but uh, but, but yeah. So so this year we Josh um, and I, um, you know, the nice thing about holidays, even if you don't celebrate them, is you have the days off to like cook something nice if you want to. So instead of making a goose, we made a five spice orange glazed duck, um, which actually is really good. Mm, and good. Uh, the one thing I did like about Thanksgiving when I was um, subjected to it as a child was pecan pie. Um, so that stayed. Um, and, you know, it was it was just a nice day off from work. And uh, like, you know, the, the, like the end of the semester has accumulated and it's nice to be able to take a nap on a day that's not a weekend. Um, <laughs> it's, what, oh, it's true. Uh, I'm, I, I take nap on, on, on weekdays. <laughs> but yeah, but, but no, I, I agree. I mean, it, it, especially after, you know, eating a large portion of turkey, which is what we had, there was a lot of, okay, I, we need to clean up and I need to do some grading and I need to, or I could just lay on the couch. Okay. <laughs> I, have to, I have to ask. Yeah. Yo. Why, why do we eat turkey? Because it's a terrible bird. It tastes like nothing. I don't. Or it's dry. I, I'm not the I like, person to ask. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Okay. So, so, so here's, um, here's an exciting things for if anyone should ever try to smoke or barbecue a turkey. I have, I have two exciting tips for you. Now, this time, this is the first time I did it this way because again, I made a much smaller bird because it was only two people. But this is a, um, a, a, a tip I, I picked up from Al Roker when I was 18, 19 years old. He mentioned it in an interview on the David Letterman show. Now, this is extremely specific and it delights me. Yes, Sorry. it is. It's, it's so, <laughs> uh, because, so here's the thing. Um, Al Roker turns out is like myself, an avid barbecuer. And again, I'm, I wasn't kidding. I literally do have three barbecue grills on my back patio because I'm very into it. I'm very into the idea of barbecuing. And I was worried about like, how do you barbecue the turkey without drying it out? Now, if you do it in an oven, uh, people know about turkey bags, right? You'll, you'll, you know, you put something over the right. turkey, cover it, you try to trap moisture in. Um, the secret to getting a well, a very juicy grilled turkey is you, you take the turkey, you do all your preparing and whatever. Now, you don't put stuffing 
inside the inside the bird when you're going to barbecue it because it will just burn it. You have to do that separately. Um, so what you, so what people normally do is they you know they roast their turkey with the stuffy with the with the stuffing pushed inside of it. Instead of that, what you do is you get yourself a can of beer. You pour out just a little bit of it. And so you want you want like two thirds to three quarters of a can of beer, and you shove it right up the turkey's ass. And then you just put the, and then you put that entire turkey inside of your smoker. Right, and then the now, steam. Steam keeps the turkey moist. Uh, well, yeah, well, yes, as well, not just not just steam. As the uh, as the bird as the bird cooks, as it gets hotter in there, the beer begins to boil, and it will just in burst shoot out and base and <laughs> continuously base the inside of the bird as it's cooking. That's and then great. when you and then when you're done, you, so you just made you just made a tidy explosive turkey. No, it doesn't explode if you do it right. That's no, why you no, don't, no, no, yeah. just 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 let me have this. <laughs> it's 2020. It's, let me have it. It's so good. And then and then <laughs> now it always looks weird because the the can just is by the time you're done cooking it because it takes several hours. It, um, depending on the inside of your bird, you might be you might be smoking a turkey for like twelve hours, twelve fourteen hours. It's like yeah, more yeah, for me. There, there was at least one to your house where I drank enough beer that I exploded. <laughs> oh man! Um, so are you, we have yeah. a cooking show? Well, yeah. I'm just, I mean, it's the, it's the cooking's popular culture. So I, then I mean, you, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm, yeah. I'm saying, do we? Wait, do we, we want to go over to the goose next? We are almost twenty minutes into the episode, my dude. Yes. Yeah. Well, but, <laughs> but anyway, then you, 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 and then I couldn't do that this year because again, the bird was too small. So instead, um, you get you get yourself and because you know you can marinate your bird. But again, it gets really hot in the smoker and it's a long period of time. So um, you get yourself a nice, um, a nice turkey injector. Um, and so you go through and, you know, which is basically a giant long syringe. And um, I made the same. I made a beer marinade, which you just inject into the turkey all over the place. So my turkey is actually nice and juicy. It's very it, it, it's um, not dry at all. So, so tips, for, uh, tips for the home beer. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so leave, right, us five star, leave us a five star review, review on <laughs> iTunes and let us know if you want us to introduce a cooking with Mav segment. <laughs> uh, so this, I feel like this is actually appropriate for this episode today. Yeah. It, 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 it is. We're talking about because like, traditions. The, right. We want to talk about traditions and specifically holiday traditions. And like, what exactly are they for anyway? Because this year, every holiday tradition is going to look different. And if your holiday tradition does not look different, uh, you're doing something wrong and you might kill somebody. Yeah. So maybe rethink that, my friends. <laughs> um, yes. But no, I mean, I think like, so like I, like I mentioned, like I'm, you know, I'm not going, I haven't seen my family at all 2020. I haven't seen them since last Christmas. I will probably not see them until there's a vaccine mm-hmm. um, because of familial health issues, being in multiple places, all those things. And I think like because of that and also because, you know, we cultural studies nerds, it got me thinking about like, well, what are holidays for? Why do we, you know, why do we gather for Thanksgiving? Why do we gather for Christmas or Hanukkah or Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever tradition you have, especially if you're, I mean, I think religious holidays, I think are so much more, somewhat more intuitive. Something like Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It's based on, it's based on a, on a myth, on a political myth to hide the genocide of our people, you know, <laughs> sure. Right. Well, yeah, your people. I'm, bla- I'm black. What am I saying? Of your people. <laughs> yeah, well, the geno- geno- genocide committed. Well, first of all, I'm Eastern European. My people yeah. weren't here. Uh, but no, it, it is, it is like that. Yeah, it is. I mean, this is one of the reasons like Hannah, Hannah and I, you know, Hannah and Josh are started Dickens giving and a lot of the grad students did is because yeah, Thanksgiving is basically commemorating the colonization of the United States, of what would, what would become the United States, which involved the genocide of Native Americans. Anyone who doesn't know this at this point in history mm-hmm. clearly has not been on the internet. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so even like, and I think that's also why like a lot of traditional Thanksgiving, like to me, it's, an, it's, it's, an, it has, it's a day off. Mm-hmm. It's an excuse to eat a lot of food and be around people that I appreciate. Yes. And to me, that has which very didn't happen, to do, so, yeah. right, which, which to me, like very little that has to do with what Thanksgiving is quote unquote supposed to be about, yeah, mm-hmm. because it is yeah. a kind of, in my opinion, a vacuous holiday. Yeah. Well, I, I think that it also, you just, you know, as Americans, you, it, American being this multicultural kind of thing, not so much back then, right. but it's all white people. But, um, you know, as we I mean, white the, people well, discovered America. Yeah, we, right. Yeah. But, but I mean, the, the whole idea, <laughs> a, a fall celebration, a harvest celebration, this is stuff that goes back to ancient of time. Sure. Right. The, 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 there's sort of a, this is the time of year that you slow down and prepare for the winter and, and you pack in the food. So I, I think Thanksgiving is a an Americanized, nationalized version of sort of a a 
I don't know, natural holiday a, that, that humans have participated in forever. Right. Uh, and, and we and we dress it up in, in pilgrim yeah. gear and, and make it an, an American thing. But I think it's it's something that has always taken place in some form mm-hmm. in, in harvest cultures. Yeah, I think I think one of the harvesting point is a good point is a good point. Like I think even just thinking about my two extended families, one of which is predominantly rural and one of which is very much like Chicago city folk. <laughs> I think Thanksgiving actually does mean more to my family who grew up farming. Yeah. Because it means something to them culturally of sort of like, oh, this is when the, sh- the seasons are shifting. That means things for crops and raising cattle and all the other stuff. So I do think that there is something to like, for those of us for whom hunting and gathering and farming are no longer significant parts of our daily lives. Like, yeah, Thanksgiving, I would say it's not, it doesn't have meaning, but its meaning is... It's, More it's, it's, very, it's very, it's very different. Yeah, I'm just imagining Thanksgiving at Katya's house being like an episode of Green Acres, where you know, <laughs> where, where the family, the city folk, and the country folk get together. And <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so I guess the thing I kept thinking about so is that I mean, holidays, like culturally speaking, the mechanism that holidays are essentially. It is a form of ritual, mm-hmm. whether it's a sacred yeah. religious ritual, as in like, you know, religious traditions of like Christmas, or if it's just like a cultural thing that happens where like the harvest, like the harvest, like festival or, you know, commemorating being fucked up genocidal maniac. I have a uh, question. I have a question, yes. though. If it's a ritual. OK, so this is and this is where this is actually going to work out really well, because well, um, let's explain. OK, let me explain right. what I mean for listeners by ritual, because sure. to me, like. And Wayne, feel free to jump in this because I know you think about similar things with like yoga and philosophy and all that. Yes. But like to me, a ritual is a culture, a, a repetitive cultural practice mm-hmm. that ascribes meaning to either yourself individually or a community. So what I mean by that yeah. is, so for example, coming of age ritual is a really good example. So like, let's say... I don't know. There's not a lot of coming in, like yeah. There are bar so mitzvahs, say, quinceaneras. Right. Um, well, I was trying to think of one specifically for my life, but like, well, okay. actually, like, so actually, for my family, it's it's not official, but it's drinking coffee. Mm-hmm. Okay. When you are allowed to drink coffee, which for me, sometimes was in middle school, that is like you are part of the grown up club. Okay. There is there is there is a coming of age aspect to it because basically, for me, it was basically the first time I had a job where I had to be up at six o'clock in the morning. I was then allowed to drink coffee, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's basically like. It is, and it's different than it, having my having my parents give me a cup of coffee and not actually saying it, but basically acknowledging you are you are a grown up now. Mm-hmm. Is very different from them just coming up to me that morning and being like, "Oh, you're an adult now." Mm-hmm. Okay. I think because I think like because I'm being brought into a ritual that my parents also do. Okay, they're also having coffee every morning. It's basically signaling you are allowed to participate in this culture, in this community, as in, as one of us. Okay. You are no longer you are no longer a child, basically. Yeah, and, well, so, and, and, and and yes, and, and on a larger scale with ritual, there's in it makes you a part of a community. Here's something that yes, here's yeah, this thing absolutely. we all share. Yeah, I mean, like in, in spite of our differences, here's this thing we share. And when you get to you know, the 21st century and multimedia and a country as large as America or whatever, we don't share a lot of people, a lot of things with people outside of our, our social group. Yeah, I mean, that that, right. that comes out all the time. I mean, you know, life in Pittsburgh is very different than it is in San Diego, uh, mm-hmm. just you know, because of culture, because of weather, because of whatever. What we do share is you know, the Macy's Parade. OK, right. I mean, that, that, that sounds ridiculous, yeah. but but everybody in America getting up and watching that and watching Al Roker talk about it and seeing that that giant balloon is something that we as a culture share. This is the thing that makes us Americans eating, you know, and so it's picking it, out. It, sure. OK. Yeah. And, and, and in some ways it's more benign than, than overt nationalism, you know. Well, you know, what you're describing sounds a lot like what Benedict Anderson talks about with the imagined communities, um, because like we are we like what he talks about is like the nation is an imagined community, not mm-hmm. not a full community, because like we don't know literally every person in the U.S. That would be impossible. But we imagine a shared culture and we participate in uh, it seems like capitalism is our shared culture. Like, I guess we can get to mm. that Black Friday. But um you know, we, we participate in specific things and it brings us together. And, you know, like, I, I think that that's why, you know, things like generic, like kind of detached from religious meaning, like Christmas, like is what people try and do when they create like Hallmark holiday movies, because mm-hmm. it's like a shared feeling. The background yeah. might be like Christian religious, but they're not really interested in that. They're trying to spread the feeling to as many viewers as possible to bring them all together 
so the network can get ratings and we can, you know, discuss the movie together on Twitter, even though we have not met. Well, we can, mm-hmm. it is, it, yeah, shared cultural experience. I mean, just, and I, I think going back to Wayne's idea, like it's not necessarily nationalist and like, you know, culty. It's like, this is just an anthropological phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Human beings, when they collect together in communities and they collect together in cultures, tend to produce some kind of traditional something precisely to concretize this. Yeah, I mean, the idea of a, a fall feast, you know, celebrating the harvest, right. and we have a fall feast, and you know, Thanksgiving, the idea of the Thanksgiving meal, it's a national feast taking place in a million little individual places. Yes. You know, we, we are sharing the experience of having a feast in our okay. own individual community, but there's a larger symbolic cultural feast that takes place. Well. So, so, that, so I want to return to my question then, because here's where I'm wondering, sure. right? Like, so we take Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is definitely one of those, definitely one of those events. Because I think there are, there are small, very specific to a tiny micro community, a micro culture, like, oh, yeah. like Katya's coffee drinking, right? For like, that mm-hmm. is a, that is a thing that is specific to her family that is a marker of adulthood. Whereas the Thanksgiving ritual is sort of an, well, Thanksgiving specifically is an American thing, but there are other, other countries have their own version of it in the, you know, at their harvest time, other cultures, but it is, it is a, it is a macro cultural experience. You said yes. a million, li- a million little tiny feasts ma- on the same day, making up a, um, a, the, the larger ritualistic America is now celebrating Thanksgiving. The world is now celebrating Christmas or some Christmas like that. Right. We do, we do those things. The holidays um, broadly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the weirdness to me though, is in the way Kati, you said this Thanksgiving looks very different for most people than most of them, because you can't get back together with your family. You said this is now you haven't well, been going the, home, home for thing. Thanksgiving, but you, right. mi- you missed it. Wayne, I know uh, now Wayne, where we you live, where, where, where we live right now, is it two and a half, three hour drive to your parents' house? No, and it's like an hour. Yeah. Is it really that close? Yeah. Yeah. It seems yeah, longer. It's close. OK, it yeah, seems no, no. longer. Yeah, no, it, it, it's like 50 miles south. Uh, okay. According to Google, when I post or Instagram, when I post pictures from there, mm-hmm. it's like 38 miles. But that's a direct line. as the No, it's lo- it's way farther than 38 miles. To <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it, like if you drew yeah. a straight line and could do it, it's 38 miles okay. on the high on the road. It's right. It's almost exactly 50 miles from my front door to theirs. OK, so so it's an hour away. And, you know, typically, you know, that that's part of now the ritual there is part of it is spending time with family. You know, you're, right. you're, oh, they, yeah, they, are, they are your parents. You love them. Right. Yeah. I, I get that. I get that. Yeah, that that's, that's definitely part of it. Yes. And and um, but like for for Hannah, you said um, specifically you've not celebrated. I mean, you're celebrating a an event, but you don't call it Thanksgiving. You don't go home for it. Dickens giving is with your friends here, right? It's the yep. it's a different kind of ritual. Well, Dickens giving and, is basically friends giving, and, right. and yeah, it, it's set on that, and it's basically like early Christmas dinner because I couldn't hold Christmas dinner here because everybody goes home. Everybody's gone, um, right? Mm-hmm. Which and then like, mine, well, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like you know, I, I it would also just be super hard to go home for a lot of people anyway when yes. our lives are here because. You know, like if I wanted to drive home um, for Thanksgiving for Turkey, it would be. Did, did you hear the catch in my voice when I said turkey? Um, it would be <laughs> like maybe twelve hours, like maybe thirteen yes. with stops. Yeah. You know, um, that's, that's what I was and, and for me, it's like seven hundred bucks, right? To yeah. go home, like it's not affordable. And that's what, that's what I was getting at. For me, when I moved to college, I think I might have gone home the first year. Um, the the like my freshman year, I think I went home during my sophomore year of college. My family moved across country, so they left my hometown. So like I so so I, I grew up in Cleveland, and they moved to Las Vegas. Since then, they've you know my brothers have grown up. They've moved on with their lives. One's in Mississippi, one's in California. Like they they've spread out. So the idea of going home for Thanksgiving is not ingrained in me because I went from living at home to going home exactly one time. And then it's just never been a thing for me. For me, Thanksgiving's always been something you I do actually experience. don't think it's ingrained in our generation. Yep. Yeah. I, because I, I think still so like the reason I say that is because like I think Dickens giving I mean Dickens giving is, is culturally specific in the sense that like we're a bunch of nerdy grad students who think this is hilarious and cool. But the other part of it is like <laughs> friends giving like friends giving like not that it never existed before, but like friends giving is a millennial phenomenon. Okay. Largely. Mm-hmm. And I think it's partially for the reason we're talking about that like going home is for many of us is either 
wildly impractical because you'd spend the entire weekend driving. Right. Or financially, it, like, not possible. Right. Um, yeah. But the other thing is also like I think, and this is where I've been thinking about like what what is what do, what do holidays mean? And I think I think especially Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving is one sort of like other religious holidays, which I think like which we could talk about later in terms of those have also changed. People, most people don't know the history, and I don't think most people would ascribe a common meaning beyond sort of what Wayne's talked about of basically like it is a communal activity that uh-huh. at some level we all, even if we don't practice, we acknowledge. Okay. Yep. Um. Yeah. But Frank, it's Friendsgiving, I think, comes about because I think our generation, and I think a lot, like for a lot of political reasons, has been more willing to basically say, like, oh, what Thanksgiving is about is spending time with people that are meaningful. Okay. My family might not be those people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because, because, like, I think of the amount of like queer friends, trans friends, even just like political rifts, like people aren't yes. willing to put up with the asshole, racist, bigoted, homophobic uncle oh, in the way that we used to be. Yep. Drunk uncle, right? Like the cartoon sure. version of of Thanksgiving that everyone has been complaining about for certainly for the entire Trump presidency. But honestly, on one level or, or another, the last 10 to 15 years. Right. It's people, like a, it's, it's uh, a little you know, mean. Everyone hates well. Thanksgiving. Well, that's why like, I'm not I'm not being like a, I'm not trying to be terrible when I say I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. But, you know, like, right. Right. Why do I want to go not to my parents? My parents are great. I talk about them all the time on the show. But why do I want to go home and talk to, you know, general person here who I would not hang out with on a day to day basis, right. except they're my family, as I think it and, is the, like the kind of question a lot of people sure. in our generation are asking. And who may or may not be a supportive person who may or right. may not be. Yes. Because like, here's the thing is, it's like when I think about like, if the holidays are about spending the people who basically spending time with the people who like have your back. Mm-hmm. And who support you and whatever. Mm-hmm. There are, and this is not a, a, a dig on any of my extended family. It's just because, like, because of proximity, I have never lived near any, like, any of my extended family in my entire life. Right, right. That so, if like I had to, if I had to pick the top fifteen people that in a crisis I call, they're not in the top. 15, most yeah. of them are not related to me. Like beyond my parents and my brother, most of them are not related to me. So when I think about like who am I going to celebrate the holidays with, mm-hmm. it's and I think I, and I don't think that I'm unusual. Mm-hmm. No, I, um, right. I, I mean, like, you're like not, my, not when your me. cousins, right? No, yeah, exactly. when your yeah, when your cousins like live in like five different states, and you convene maybe once a year if your family's schedules match up. You you don't really like grow up with mm-hmm. them in the same way that you might if you lived in the same. Well, yeah, see, I, I, and I did. Right. I did grow well, up the with other them. Thing is well, also, it's, I did grow up with them, sure. but again, after after we grew up we got so dispersed across the country. Cause I, so the way I grew up, I saw my, I saw Thanksgiving, we had Thanksgiving dinner together every year from, you know, me being zero to me being 18 or 19. Cause I went home once. Right. And then after that, Thanksgiving has been right. something I spent. If I went to somewhere, it's, to whoever's house I was dating at that point or a roommate or I just got together with friends here or at college or wherever, you know, like there's those holidays for me have never been, I've never really had that many of the hang out with your drunk uncle and discuss politics problems because I've never really done it. But like, neither have I. And I think honestly, yeah, my, but everybody seems to hate it is what I was getting at. And I don't understand why the, I don't understand why this year when people couldn't do it, people were so, well, what, how do we do this? We, we, we can't go home for Thanksgiving. And, and like, I watch the internet. Everyone just complains on Thanksgiving normally who actually does that. I, so I don't understand so this is my theory. the attraction. This is my theory. And it's, it's just, it's entirely made up. So it's not really a meaningful one. I think it's because I, I like, I wonder if it's because Thanksgiving has become a holiday we complain about. And now we don't have that. <laughs> is it? No. Is it that part of the ritual is complaining? Uh. Like if, and again, this is just entirely like a theory that is in my brain. Like if for people, okay. So one, I think the people who are going home and hate it are people who are stuck going home. Cause when I see those memes, they're either people who are too young to have a choice mm-hmm. or because of familial pressures that they can't, fight against for whatever reason mm-hmm. are like trapped well trapped in some cases might not be too strong of a word but trapped in having to reenact a tradition basically against their will okay i see a lot of that and then by the time that whatever they're old enough or are in a situation where they can reject that tradition you often do okay um i'm sure that's true of a lot everybody uh but for people and i think this is especially like i don't know but for people for who like are complaining about Thanksgiving in a general sense, I'm like, 
maybe those are the same people that are complaining now because for them, maybe complaining about Thanksgiving is part of Thanksgiving. That's the ritual. Okay. I can buy that. I mean, like, to to back you up, to back you up, I, uh, every week before Thanksgiving, I clean my house, including the baseboards, because that's That's what you do. That's when people come over. That's what I do. And last weekend, I woke up super early. I made Josh run a bunch of errands with me um, and help clean up the house. No one came over. It's just (laughs) us. No one's going to see the inside of our house. My mother's not going to show up to yell at me about my baseboards not being properly cleaned. But I did it anyway. Because that's when you do it. That's part of the ritual. That's when I do it. I think it's it's because that's about the time limit of how long I can like let my baseboards go without going insane. Um, I've trained myself to do it. But you know the. But that's the point. But I think there's something to that. Like there is something like we like every year at New Year's we have a, like not everyone, but a lot of us have this compulsion to like, oh, I'm going to make resolutions. We're all going to start going to the gym now and all of the crap. <laughs> like why? There's no actual reason mm-hmm. that the turning of a new calendar is the reason we all decide to buy a Fitbit. <laughs> like zero. And yes, capitalism and advertising and all that stuff. But like there is we we do like tradition does kind of compel us at a certain point because if everyone around you is doing the same things and that's your community whether you like them or not you are more likely to do those things Mm -hmm. i mean which i think is also what why i was interested in thinking about this is because it's like well we're at a moment where if you are engaging like i said top of the episode if you are engaging in the traditions that you did all the time and those traditions include getting together with every tom dick and harry that you're related to you are probably endangering somebody Mm -hmm. Whether you intend to or not, but if you are gathering in groups over, like, whatever it is, 5, 10, whatever it is in your state, honestly, in groups indoors, period, you are probably endangering somebody. Mm-hmm. So in this moment, what does it mean to be, like, accepting those traditions as we've always done them? Because, like, to me, it's like, okay, this is where, like, to me, it's like, it's just like, okay, this is a moment where we have to consciously think about what traditions are and why we do them. Because if we just do them the way we've always done them, you might kill somebody. Right. It's one of the reasons I didn't go yeah. home. It's like, there is a non-zero chance, and this is the conversation with my parents, it's like, there's a non-zero chance that I could go home and I could bring COVID from a, the place I am now has more cases than the place I would be going. Mm-hmm. There is a possibility, again, even if it's slight, but a possibility that I could cause one of these spreader events that leads to people dying. Sure, sure. Well, you know, I, and I've read a lot of like tweets recently of people who um you know like haven't seen anyone are just using masks um to go to the grocery store sometimes like maybe even just doing everything that they can like contactless pickup and despite doing everything you know right more or less like they're still contracting covid so there's and you know negative tests like getting a negative test result doesn't always mean you don't have covid Mm -hmm. um we've seen so honestly like there there's no guarantee no matter what you do that you might not be an asymptomatic carrier Mm -hmm. Right. There's no guarantee. And also just like, but the, I guess the question is like, then if we're doing traditions on autopilot, because I think that's what a lot of people yes. do. People are doing traditions on autopilot because sort of like Hannah's, I think Hannah, your baseboard example is really great because it's like, because we're all stressed out and losing our minds, essentially on some level or another, we are craving normalcy. Yes, absolutely. Engaging in these traditions. So like Wayne talking about his soup, with like like smoky or turkey, whatever. I mean, for me, West Coast thing, like hanging out with the West Coast people, like the West Coast people of my pod and doing the West Coast food thing. Like it's about returning to normalcy. The problem is, or at least the thing that I keep thinking about and like the reason I'm okay with not going home is like the thing that for me, the ritual is supposed to enact is about being with your family. It's about taking care of your family. And it's like in this moment, if I did those traditions on autopilot, I would be doing the opposite of what that is intended to be because I have older parents with health complications. There is a non-zero chance I could get them very sick or right. get them in the hospital. And it's more, and if the, and if the ritual, I mean, it becomes a question of what's the ritual for, right? Like, which is what we've been talking about this exactly. entire episode. If the ritual is because you're celebrating, you know, the harvest, I guess, um, with people that you love, you love them. So maybe not kill them. Right. Like that's the, that's the plan. Right. But then I, what I'm wondering is, you know, how much of the ritual now, again, in my case, I guess I do have something of the uncomfortable bit, but not with my actual family, because I've spent holidays with my wife's family, some of whom I politically disagree with on certain things. And um, the difference is having not grown up with them. Um, I don't have any kind of ingrained, you know, oh, don't argue with aunt so-and-so 
built in the way they might where they're like, oh, well, she's sure. your, I'm, I, I mean, I am very, I am very much the guy that is willing to say, no, 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 what you're saying is evil. Fuck you. Like, I'm willing to say that in front of my, you know, in-law family because I right. can. Um, so I get that. Right. But then I'm thinking about um, there are traditions that aren't even about family. So I'm not going to name the person, but I got into an argument this last week with um, someone who was who was talking about they, you know, well, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do um, my Christmas vacation with my family. And I'm like, well, you know, don't. Yeah, you're not. And it's like, well, but we be. go to Florida every year. You know, what, what yeah, we do? Don't do and it. I'm like, oh, no. Are, are you insane? You know, why? Why would you do this? And it's like, well, I think, you know, I'm looking at the numbers and it doesn't look like it's any worse there than here. And then in, dis- in the discussion, oh, I realized. Not- He's not actually going to go see grandma for Christmas. You know, it's just that they take their family vacation in December every year. That's when they always do it. So he wants to. And it's like, well, why? And he's like, well, you know, it, it's, it's it's part of our it's our tradition. It's what we do as a family. We go to wherever they go, whatever resort they go to. And he's like, you know, we see the same wait staff every year. And, and, you know, we like them and, you know, they're they're friends at this point. And I'm like, if they're friends, why are you trying to kill them? Well, I don't think I will. Everybody thinks they won't. But so you don't. That, you know, and and you it was, don't I was just getting, that. I, mean, I was getting frustrated. Right. But like the what I think it really comes down to is, you know, nine months in. And I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know that he would say it this way. But frankly, he's sure. just sick of he's sick of being quarantined and being you know, on lockdown and being yeah. socially distant. And uh, and to be fair, he is smart enough that I'm sure he would try to make good decisions while he's that da- while he's down there. But they want the closest thing to a normal that they can have. And their normal thing is they go to this resort in December at the beginning of December. So that's their normal. And I'm like, well, this is not a normal year. You know, like, and this, I'm right, sorry. And the thing is, it's like, do the traditions mean the same thing in a completely different? Because we effectively we are existing in a different cultural context than we did this time next last yes. year. Yes. And it's like, you know, like or at any point, presumably in our lifetime. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine. I mean, to me, it's like and this is not. This might be a more extreme example because I'm like, would people like, for example, if we if the same amount of people were dying every day because we had a war on American soil, mm-hmm. would people be trying to do? This? I don't know. Maybe. And that's the thing that's scary to me. It seems like <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Is it seems like, yes, it's like people are craving normal. It seems at all costs. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, and I guess this is my 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 like, like argument for why people need to have think more consciously about their their traditions this year. It's not just about. Mm-hmm. Consciously about, are you going to kill somebody or not? It's consciously about, are you doing, are you participating in a ritual that you actually stand behind? I mean, this is why, like, for, to me, for, I've been thinking about Friendsgiving a lot. Because to me, Friendsgiving is about saying, like, no, actually spending spending this holiday with my family every year is not the ritual enacting the community I want to be a part of. It's saying, like, no, actually, this community of my friends that I've picked is more meaningful, more supportive, whatever. Yes. And and I... <laughs> And I, I mean, it's, I don't want to, it's weird because I don't want to just like diss the return to normal thing, but you just asked what we do it during a war. And I, I really, I'm not, I mean, I wouldn't because I am, you know, I, it's very important that I live. The world needs my genius. You know, I don't know. I just, I'm afraid of death. I don't want to <laughs> well, go out like, there. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I understand, but looking at this is a different person, somebody I went to high school with and um, you know, there's a lot of memes on, you know, you know, your friends from high school, you know, sure. Medical science experts, you know, they've all said this is bad, but you know, that guy from high school, you know, he, he says, right. the hope. Um, I was watching this is someone I know from high school and she was posting, she got upset. It wasn't even a meme. She screenshotted it. She was just on Facebook. And I guess she had an ad for, uh, this is, this is probably early October. She posted this. Um, she, she sure. screenshotted it. It was an ad for a match set of mittens, um, a face mask and a hat, you know, winter, winter mittens, face mask and hat. And she's like, no, this is ridiculous. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to still be doing this uh, in in the winter. This needs to end now because this is, she was just very offended that anybody would match their, you know, the, the, would need to match their masks to their hat. I mean, and I mean, well, I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. Where can I get these matches? Not- <laughs> right. I think it's I want, hey, I want, dude, I, I want an adorable match kitten, match mitten, and and, and masks. I, I absolutely want this. But like, it started a conversation on her page where where people were just like, well, this needs to end now. And 
and I am not, I refuse, you know, we can't, we're missing out on this and my kid's been out of school and, but I am not giving up Thanksgiving with my family. I'm not giving up Christmas with my family. Enough is enough. And I'm like, what do you mean enough is enough? Who are you arguing with? You know, the virus, you're arguing with the virus. virus. <laughs> the virus is not me, listening this is to also you. Like- so, but I don't think there's a conscious understanding of, on her part well, because- of, like why she even wants yeah. the, the tradition because it's normal. Yeah, she just and wants think, normal, and, it, and that's the and that's where we're, I think we're we're hitting this cultural like as a cultural studies person, I find this entire phenomenon fascinating mm-hmm. because we are seeing in real time like we were like we talked about at the beginning of the show like what's valuable about ritual. It's about establishing community. It's about establishing identity. It's about establishing meaning in otherwise meaningful chaotic meaningless chaotic lives. On the other hand. When it's on autopilot and you're doing it just because it's what you do, it can be incredibly harmful and incredibly dangerous. Mm-hmm. Like if you're, I mean, so for example, like, I mean, I thought people about Friendsgiving, but I'm like, if that, what we're seeing here in real time is basically like the awful and potentially dangerous part of ritual is that ritual like has all those positive things of like bringing you together, establishing identity and all this other stuff. But it can also, when you're doing on autopilot, like we're seeing you do it because it's normal and you do it because you don't know anything else. And it's comforting. Oh, I got an example. I got an example. Okay. Go for it. Uh, as we're recording this, Mississippi State and the University of Mississippi oh are playing <laughs> against each other in the Egg Bowl. In the, the middle of a pandemic. In the middle of a pandemic. College football is already immoral for a lot of reasons. <laughs> hey, the oh, players. Okay. Football. Egg Bowl. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was very confused. As someone just oh, my God. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. I just, There's a golden yeah, egg trophy yeah. involved. They always play yeah. either Thanksgiving Day or the weekend after Thanksgiving. Oh, but, but I, it's but, like a whole thing. But I just imagine how, inc- I mean, well, I was like completely following along. And I just, the now egg, I just realized, you know, football. oh, wow, if you don't know sports, that was everything she just said was really fucking confusing. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and turn yeah, back, 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 back up. up. Yeah, yeah, Mississippi response. State and the University of Mississippi <laughs> have a huge rivalry. Um, it's extremely toxic, honestly, uh, now that I am out of there and can think about it. Uh, every year they play a football game. It's like the final match of the regular season. Those games are wild. Like, mm-hmm. just just Google last year's Egg Bowl. Um, it was strange. There, I would just get a bo- anyway. If, if, uh, if it, I don't get a picture of just a bowl of eggs, I'll be very sad. There, <laughs> there's a, the trophy called the Golden Egg because you know football is shaped like eggs. There's a whole history. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're That's still playing. So they're still playing. Also, like Mississippi State's <laughs> football coach. Um, wow. Also, like <laughs> the coaches have this bet about like whoever like wins. Um. Like is gonna get their uh, private jet expenses paid for by the loser coach, so they can go to Florida or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I read an article, and it's just like, guys, like think about the players, think about these young kids who are gonna like who ha- have been getting sick with COVID like across the country, mm-hmm. like and, risking potentially permanent lung yes. damage. Yes, exactly. And or and you know some like I like you know people like this age in these age groups are dying. Like it's not like everybody who is 18 to like 22 years right. old recovers from COVID. And even if you recover again, pre-existing conditions um, for the rest of your life, and, horrific. And even maybe paid. just don't kill the players, you know, grandparents. Yeah. It'd be nice. You know? Yeah. 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 Just, well, it's, it's like, it's like, sports sports watch example. universities, some more than others take mm-hmm. lots of um, safety precautions in terms of how they operate. Uh, they've made an exception for football. Like some universities are, yeah. treating their players better but it's still all like what are you doing this is a contact sport why is this happening i mean like you know you can read it uh like go listen to the end of sport podcast for a better analysis than this but still this is this is the example of a ritual where people want to feel normal where it's literally well, a health hazard and it's and like it was it was oh. one of the first things i feel like the fall the beginning of fall was basically the two things that were like I think started the whole like, oh, we're just going to do traditions because they're traditional, not because they're actually a good idea right now, was was the return of college football and sports. Mm-hmm. Um, and also going back, I think, to... to college? <laughs> yeah, to, cool. to a different degree, going back to college. I mean, going back to school, I think in some ways I can, I can make more of a, a case for it because it's like we know that in-person learning outcomes... Mm-hmm. Are better more so for I don't know more so for elementary school even than like what we do like I mean right. I, I think what we do is really important however I, I again I must live right you know so <laughs> but there's at least there's there is there's a practical case to be made for going back to school uh-huh. 
Uh, there is, I think, a practical case for sports on the economic level. Mm-hmm. I don't think it quite rises to the level because I'm not even sure that the practical case for education rise, rises to yeah. the I, I, level of, of appropriateness. But I think like, yeah, like I, I don't know. I, I just keep thinking about like, oh, I'm a huge we, football fan. And I, you know, and again, middle of pandemic, I've been watching it. I mean, I'll be honest about it. So it is. It I mean, is, if it's there. Well, it's there. And, you know, frankly, there's there there's a i mean for the return to normalcy right there are there are three hours every sunday where i get to just i mean you, you've listened to the show before you know i am a news junkie i leave cnn on around the clock while i'm working so three hours a week i get to turn my brain off and just watch the steelers throw a ball back and forth and it's great like i mean mm-hmm. I, I do look forward to it however it, i'm doing it because it's there it's probably a smarter idea for the ritual to not exist to not you know like there's there's a there is a trade-off between you, mental health be and replaced yeah. instead with, with marble yeah. yeah yeah i mean that, that's literally what john oliver argued also uh i think that it's really hard for individuals to break free from the ritual when say sports journalists um are on the whole normalizing playing a pandemic uh just like looking at the tweets of some of the um, sports journalists covering the Egg Bowl because I've followed them for other reasons um, or like specific like ang- recipes, retweets. Like it's just terrible. It's just horrible. Um, just it's not just weird. Well, and I think, and then, like you see, I mean, you see like it's happening all over the place. We're seeing yeah. university presidents normalizing all kinds of things, including the deaths yeah. of students and staff. Yeah. Uh, or you, or you see, casually yeah. ignore. Or you see, um, like you see people gather, like presidents, uh, you know, governors, like talking about how they're going to gather with their family. And if you know the people who are telling you to follow certain safety guidelines aren't following them, why would you follow them? Mm-hmm. I mean, we we the uh, structural uh, response to the pandemic has been really bad. Mm-hmm. Do you say the least? So that, guess, is, that is like the most bland way I could say it. I think, Mav, though, you raised at the end of your comment, you raised an important point is there is like the aspect of mental health. Yes. Here. And I guess like is I mean, for me, I made the personal calculation that it is more damaging to my mental health to do holidays as we did them previously, right. because I don't want that shit in my conscience. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, I think part of what we're seeing, like people being fed up who may not be thinking about it consciously, it's like, I'm, I'm sure a significant part of it is people are craving normal because that's like what makes them feel okay. Yes. And well, it's the, you so, know, okay. Whether or not that's here's the correct priority. Here's what I'm wondering. I heard what I'm wondering. Question. Like, okay, we started this conversation with a couple of things. We talked about Katya from your case, uh, coffee. Sure. And Wayne from your case, uh, Thanksgiving noodles, your mom's noodles, right? Mm-hmm. So like, uh, I, I wonder if in, in both of those cases, it was just sort of a, this is what, when you said, you said, um, you know, you've been helping your entire life, but until you were like 10, helping probably doubled the amount of time your mom took to, <laughs> right, you know, exactly. you were helping by making it harder. But like now, 40 years later, you can, you know, you can make them right. Like good. You yeah. Know, so, so, so wonderful. Um, and I, but I wonder, I mean, you, you even said, you're not going home. So you called it a comfort. You made noodles because, yeah. it, because this gave you a sense of connection with your family, with the past, yep. with tradition, with, you know, everything about that. Right. Um, same thing, you know, Katya, like you're, you drink coffee partly because you like coffee, but also at I did not like coffee. Okay, so at age twelve, this up. made you a grown up. That's exactly what I was thinking, right? Like this meant this meant, hey, I'm okay now. I'm part of the cool club. This is, I mean, it, it was like so. I don't know that I consciously think about this when I put on the Steelers game, but I but I said it makes me feel okay. So maybe it's just this is our way of. No, I don't think anybody says I'm going to stick my head in the sand, but it is a metaphorical. I'm sticking my head in the sand and I'm just being okay for it. It it is our way of turning off the news and shutting out the world. And yes, my worry is that there are, you know, there are people who want to shut off the world to the point, you know, my friend who wants to go on vacation just because that's what his family does. Yeah. Like I'm making the judgment. Mm -hmm. I don't get to make a judgment. I can't stop him. Right. But I'm saying, no, intellectually, what you want to do is stupid. Your ritual for calming yourself, you know, stay at home and play well, backgammon or something. You're putting your head in the sand for three hours. He's doing it for 
days. Right. And, he- and your and I think there's also a difference between you are putting your head in the sand to ignore the news for three hours. There's not a direct detrimental. Right. I'm not hurting anybody else. Uh, though, right. maybe if no one, maybe if we all culturally agreed that we're not watching the fucking NFL, they wouldn't have it. And like, like, so, so there is an indirect effect that I'm, that I'm partially responsible for. And I am acknowledging sure. that. I mean, I, I do acknowledge that, but I just wonder, I, I mean, how well, do you balance perfect. it? Yeah. I, and I don't, and I don't know I how mean, to balance I mean, it. I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm not pretending to be perfect there. You know? Well, going back I mean, to the, I, you know, comments about like, this is too much like taking my holidays holidays is too much and yes like they're talking to a virus but like i think if we all like sat here for three minutes and made a list about all the things we've lost because of how the pandemic has played out in the u.s we would we would if we read it aloud it would be you know a very long and depressing show yeah. So I I think that that is not it's not a rational um or health conscious attitude but at the same time I mean, it's like you know in terms of feelings I think a lot of people were holding on to surely this can't go on until Christmas yeah. we can at least have Christmas back and now we're faced with yet another loss which mm-hmm. you know other communities um that celebrate across the year have already lost. I will say for listeners on the chance that the worst thing that happens to you this year is you don't get to have Thanksgiving. You don't get to have Christmas. You are disgustingly fortunate. Yeah. Well, does it make a difference? Like that's, if you... that's the thing that I think angers me the most about those comments. And like, if the worst thing that happens to you is you don't get to celebrate your holidays with your family, speaking to someone who is not going to get to do that with, for any mm-hmm. holidays this year. Right. And I haven't done it for any holidays. If that's in the years. worst thing that happened. To, right. But if like, if that is the worst thing that happens to you, you are very lucky. Right. If you have a job, if you have food on the table and you have a roof over your head right now, you get to sit down and calm down. Yeah. But like one of the things that I think like I, I saw this like a while ago on Twitter when people first started talking about like, oh, well, I, if, if they take away my holidays, blah, blah, blah. Somebody pointed out like, oh, you mean like every undocumented person ever can't go to the holidays for probably the rest of right. their life? Yep. It's like, yeah, exactly. Like you it's it's like the people at least the people I see who are complaining about this publicly, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to play a game of like, oh, well, it's harder for you or you or someone's lost more or whatever. But it's at the same time, it's like if if literally if like, I mean, I know people who's like fam, like have friends and family that are dying. I have, have two dead people. Yeah. I, have de- I have two people who have exactly. died in my family from, from coronavirus. And it's so. like if that's so it's like, yeah, it's like if the holidays are the, are, are, are the thing that you're most worried about, either your priorities are backwards and you should maybe think about what this holiday means anyway, mm-hmm. one, or two, you haven't lost that much. That's my question. In the grand scheme yeah. of the universe. And and speaking of which, um, if you can, uh, try to donate to your local food bank because this weekend, just the coverage of the lines and how many millions of people have lost mm-hmm. jobs and everything, like, it's just... Yeah. Well, that was so that, that's what I was. That, that's my question, though. So, is it a question of like, so when you're seeking normalcy, right? Like, any, any, this has been a disruption. I don't want to, I don't want to minimize that. You, you mentioned the, sure. the mental health aspect. It is, it is a, even if you don't know anybody, this has been mentally unhealthy for all of us. I, I get that, right? So, the normalcy that we're looking for, right? Is it more, does it matter more? You said you don't want to play the game of, you know, who's it hurt the most, but maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's, if you've only been hurt a little bit and this is still the worst thing that's ever happened to you, you don't feel fortunate. So it, I always think it's unfair when you, when people say, right. When, when people, t- when, when somebody loses their job and they're like, well, yeah, but there's destitute people all over the place. That's not really a comfort to those people, right? Like it's like, yeah, no, sure. I went from being rich to being poor suddenly and my life has been better than the people who've been poor all along, but it still sucks for that person. So I get that. I get that how right. being locked in your house mm-hmm. sucks for you. But like, if the worst of this is that you've been locked in the house, then this is a really huge deal. My mother keeps a list of people in our family who have gotten COVID. She's at twenty. Yeah, she's at twenty people in my in my relatively uh, my relatively cl- close family um, that she's counting, and I believe two deaths. So that's yeah. like so that yep. so that's scary. So the perspective of, you know, how do I get back to normal? Getting back to normal for me isn't being able to celebrate Thanksgiving. I didn't do that anyway. Getting back to normal for me would be like my aunt being alive again. And that's not going to happen. Right. Yeah. So. Well, and and in my case, it's like like I haven't I've been very lucky in that I haven't lost any. I've had family that's gotten COVID, but I haven't lost anybody yet. Right. Uh, right. But for me, it's also like, I mean, speaking of the tradition itself, it's like being able to go home 
and know that I won't kill my parents. Right, right. So, yeah. and you know, I mean, I like I, that's what I, normal mm-hmm. would and, be. And you know, it'd be better if we could do that next year. You know, you miss one year. Yeah. Again, I haven't been home to see my family. I'm 46 years old. The last time I went home for Thanksgiving, I was 19. So, you know, it's yeah, and and I I fully recognize yeah. in my case, and you know, and I you're relatively close. I'm blessed. I, yeah, I'm blessed with good parents. I genuinely enjoy their their company. Mm-hmm. I live close enough. You know, I I've gone home on a really regular basis and and had an ongoing adult friend relationship with my parents for a long ass time. Mm-hmm. But I also recognize that I you know my situation of doing every Thanksgiving and Christmas with my parents at my age is ungodly unusual. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I completely get that. Mm-hmm. So. <sighs> So what? So uh, well, I, 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 and it's also I wonder if um, maybe because we've made Thanksgiving, well, certainly Christmas, but I think Thanksgiving, Christmas, Fourth of July, you know, we've made these things. Uh, oh God, New Year's is going to come up, right? Same thing, right? We've yep. made these big, massive oh, cultural God. holidays New where Year's everybody where everybody does something, you know, and maybe that seems weirder to lose the one that everybody touches on compared to. Like the the tradition of just having coffee because you're 12 now. Um, or okay, right. here's my family tradition. You know, for the one, here's the the weird family tradition that I miss more than anything else. It's not really a family tradition. It was more of it was, it was essentially a friendsgiving, um, except for it was December 24th. Um, from as long well, I shouldn't say as long as it. Basically, since long before I was born, up until they died, one of my grandmother's best friends um, had gumbo. Gumbo was, she was from Louisiana. Mm. So um, her, her and her husband were, and they moved up to Cleveland and become friends with my grandparents. And on December 24th, at midnight, the gumbo party starts. And the gumbo party is um, at Marge. Marge is my grandmother's friend, or was when she said. But um, the gumbo party starts after people have done their midnight mass or their midnight service or whatever. You you show up at the Bragg's house, um, uh, Marge Bragg's house, and there's a basement full of, you know, 100 people. They, and they made this homemade gumbo that was delicious. And it's a grown up party. So I start I got to start going when I was 13. Like that was like you kids don't come. So and it was a big deal because, you know, you're 13, you're 14. And you've got and like I'm 13 years old and my 11 year old brother can't can't go to gumbo. So, you know, suck it. You know, ha ha. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I need to stay up late. And eat gumbo. Right. Suck but, it, it. but it was amazing. Right. It was amazing. And it's just people. Right. It's just people hanging out, drinking, having a good time. From midnight, now our, we went to like midnight service, so we get there around 1 a.m., right? Um, one 1.30, because, you know, we have to drop my brothers about off at home. So 1.30 till about 3 or 4 in the morning. It's just like a hangout, and it's just a, a late night party on Christmas Eve every year. And we basically did that because I went home for Christmas a lot more often than I went home for Thanksgiving. So, but I don't really, you know, I don't miss the, the, um, the Christmas get togethers as much because that we replicate. Like, so even though I don't see my family very often on Christmas, I've been doing FaceTime or Skype or Zoom Christmas, you know, literally for 20 years now. Like it's been or, right. or for 15 years for quite some time. I've been doing, well, I've been and, doing and, that, and, but I would go. And you and Steph and you and Steph have also established your own. Right. We have our own family and friends out here yeah. that we see. Right. Right. So, so sure. But like, but like gumbo as a tradition basically stopped when Marge Bragg, when my grandmother's friend died. So I haven't done, mm-hmm. yeah. I haven't done that in, you know, in 20 years, you know, um, like whenever, you, and right. when, and whenever my, my, my mom didn't come home, my grandparents stayed in Cleveland. My mom didn't come back as often as I did. So, um, so, you know, but when I would go and I'd go see, stay with my grandparents, we'd go over and have gumbo and it was great. Right. Like that was just what you did. And the gumbo party ended when they died. And that's a, a tradition that I sort of miss because it's not something that I can just replicate over Zip. Right. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. it's just, it was just, um, so I wonder if this is like, this is people's attempt to just capture, like, n- no one wants to do Zoom because they don't want to have to do Zoom, right? We do Zoom every day yeah. and it's just like sort of a, this is Christmas, Christmas needs to be special. This is Thanksgiving, it needs to be special. I think there's also something to be said, if you are a person who celebrates a version of Thanksgiving, I actually think capturing Thanksgiving right now is harder than Christmas. Yeah. Because Christmas is about like Christmas Day and or like usually like spending time with your family and just like hanging out because Thanksgiving is so like food oriented. Mm-hmm. 
And Christmas has that too. And I imagine a lot of other, I mean, I'm from a family that we're not religious, but we celebrate Christmas. I imagine this is probably true of some other holidays. But like Thanksgiving, especially if you're not doing like the whole like American, America nationalism mm-hmm. thing, like Thanksgiving is all about the food. Right, right. And being there and sharing food, you can't do that through Zoom. So I, I wonder if in some ways Thanksgiving is harder for us, for those of us who celebrate a version of it to kind of cope with because it's harder to replicate. Like my family, we're already talking about like, oh, what weird technology we're going to employ to like recreate Christmas. That actually seems less difficult than Thanksgiving. Yeah, well, and it, it, you know, all of us, I mean, how, when was the last time any of us went out to dinner with friends or, or hung out and did that right. sort of thing? And this is, sure. and here's an entire hall. I mean, we can't do that day to day. And here's the special day based around mm-hmm. that. Right. And it really points out not just what we're missing that day, but what we've been missing for months. And I know, I mean, you asked, like, I know for me, the, the last big gathering that I went to, you were there, Wayne. We, we, we went, I mean, yeah. And I've seen a few people since then, but, you know, yeah. we went to the movies and it was weird. You know, I, I've, we've mentioned on the show before. It was yeah. weird because there were 20 of us in a giant movie theater. So, you know, no one was closer than 20 feet away other than the person mm-hmm. you came with. But, oh, my God, I've seen 20 other people at the same time. It was yeah. it was great. right? <laughs> and, and, and that was four months into this. Yeah. And, and it was just like, oh, oh, look, Mav exists in the real world. Right. Yeah. Just the, and, yeah, and that was yeah, that was six months ago, you know. <laughs> so but it was great. So I mean, is it just I mean, if traditions, if rituals are about making us feel a part of something and now we've had a year, you know, well, this started in America, this started in February, a couple other places in the world, you know, January or December. So now we're, you know, we're coming up on a year of craziness now, right? So is it just, is this, is it, is ritual now just about trying to recapture, to recapture that normalcy, even if the normalcy wasn't great before? Yeah. I, I mean, I think there's an, I think there's an aspect of that. And I think it's also like, because it's, well, I don't know if it's necessarily the same thing, but it's about resisting change because yeah. everything else this year has changed. Mm-hmm. And that like, yeah, I think part of it, especially for the people for like, this is their line in the sand. It's they're basically saying like, at least my interpretation is that they're probably, they're, they're saying something to the effect of like, they can't handle change anymore. And when I think about the people that I personally know that are the like Thanksgiving or Christmas, whatever is their line in the sand, especially the ones that are being like real frankly ignorant about it (laughs) yeah they're people who i just know like don't cope with change well they don't or like they're um, like and and i'm not saying there's a value judgment i'm saying that it's like they're people for whom change is difficult Mm -hmm. and for and people for whom like stability like they really value stability and tradition and everything and everything like that so like i can totally see like for example like losing thanksgiving is probably more painful for them than it would be for someone for whom like is more accustomed to change and more accustomed to stability instability and doesn't really find like stability is not where they find their comfort mm-hmm. essentially. Um, that doesn't make it okay. No, I mean, losing, <laughs> Which I think losing, is, your, I mean, losing your like, parents or your grandparents or your brother or your sister, or your kids going to be more painful. I assure you. Um, and that's the, and that's the, and I think that's also the thing that like, I mean, I am angry at the people who would basically like, they, they keep saying things like this is the worst thing that's happened in the whole year because I think again, either they're lying or their priorities are backwards, or they're very lucky. Mm-hmm. Two, especially like seeing like Instagram and Twitter and like what people got up to this weekend. I'm just like, oh, oh no. <laughs> like you th- like like you thought this was the worst thing that was gonna happen to you. Actually, probably the next two to three months. I hope, I hope I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. And I hope a lot of people I know in the medical profession who who have been telling me this are also wrong. But I'm like, what just happened this last weekend and what's about to happen over the next like month and a half of holidays makes us all suffer more for longer. Yeah. And like, it's not like, it's 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 highly likely to. And then I'm, I am, I'm going to say that I am following CDC guidelines when it comes to Christmas. And, you know, I, I am deeply sad that it won't be the same. Like I, I have selfishly been sad in my own private home about like how things are going to change this year because I do love to going to see my sister and my parents and Mm -hmm. reenacting the rituals that we had together as children and adding more adult ones that are fun now but you know if we want to protect our community and care for people care just looks a little different this year Mm -hmm. or a lot different depending on what you do and no one should feel bad or selfish for that being sad no. like being sad about losing this shit i think is actually i, th- I think this year is part of the cultural ritual yeah. 
Like Mm -hmm. we know that we're a community because we're upset that we're missing out on these things. Like as a culture, we're not good with grief. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that's, that's, I think like, yeah, like this year it sucks that grieving is part of our holidays. Either because it's like you've lost somebody or just you are grieving the loss of normal. So is that the secret? Um, Embrace the grief and like this is let's all be sad together and celebrate. I mean, I, I don't know if it's I, April grief giving. Kind of. I think actually, yeah. yeah. Like there is solidarity in the fact that is, I think I think there's solidarity and comfort in knowing that you, it's not it, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that like I I know, you know, the people I, I spent Thanksgiving with my like tiny pod of two other people who are in the same position that I'm in and that they will not see their families right. because they're, their families on the West coast, like, and other friends that I know their holidays look very different. I think there is, I, I take comfort in the fact that there are people who are taking this seriously on the same boat that mm-hmm. I am. So I, I think weirdly, yes, like there is comfort in knowing that like there is communal grief, like grief. I mean, gr- the entire process of grieving itself is highly ritualized sure. anyway. I mean, I think it's interesting to think about what collective grief looks like in this moment. As Wayne noted out, we are not a culture that is good at grieving. No. <laughs> I think. Um, and also, like, how do you grieve something like this? Like, when we think of grief, we usually think of like the loss of a loved one, and there is a lot of that. But also, like, we are grieving in no. some ways. Normality. Yeah, and culture. We're, we're grieving. Well, we're grieving culture. Yeah. Like, which I think is an interesting premise. It's like we have we haven't lost our culture, but. I mean, maybe in some ways we have culture like once like post pandemic culture is not going to look the same as it did before it. And then maybe that's scary to a lot of people. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, well, just we're, we're we're grieving. I mean, the, the normality we're grieving the way we do friendship. We're grieving the loss of concerts and movies. We're we're grieving the ability to just be with friends and family. You know, it's yeah. our entire lives are completely different. We're grieving the loss of job, you know, um, just all of that stuff. And and yes, it. it there's tremendous sadness around this entire year and the holidays, which are about celebration or, you know, and obviously the holidays can come with their own share of stress and, and bad family stuff and all that stuff. But ostensibly they're about celebration and very few of us feel we have much to celebrate this year. Mm-hmm. Other than the fact that 2020 will in fact end. It, yeah. Well, and, but, well, I mean, well, the, the year, year, the year will end. Yeah. Not, well, and that's the thing. is not like, magic. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. No. And, but wait, I think that's an interesting point. And I think that's like, and, and I think this is why I keep going back to to the idea of like the holidays are going to look very different for me and my family. But in some ways, I feel like this is the year that I think my family will appreciate them much more because because it is about grieving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like because like when like when I think about the people that I celebrate with, mm-hmm. those are the people that when I am grieving are the people I would rely on. Yeah. So in some ways, like. The yeah. connection that we value around the holidays and everything like that is actually going to be much more profound because we're collectively going through trauma and we're processing trauma. And whether we like it or not, I mean, this is the thing that like maybe 2020 is taken from us. We're not going to probably have particularly celebratory holidays. There will be things to celebrate for a lot of people, like amidst the trash fire of 2020. But I think a lot of it is going to be about processing grief well, and and that i mean just the and i'm i'm blanking on the the name of the theorist there's the the famous five stages of grief mm-hmm. right and and i think unfortunately what happens to a lot of people individually but as a culture i'm seeing it getting stuck in that anger phase yes as opposed to being able to move on to accept um people are just really angry they're angry at not being able to go out i mean we see that in politics obviously on both sides Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, that tired of being told what to do, tired of having my freedoms taken away, tired of you know, and just the immense anger that that is bubbling in our culture right now. And I, I really think a lot of that comes from grief. We we are grieving all the stuff I just talked about. We're grieving a system. We're, we're grieving political discourse. You know, we're just that there's so many things that are there. There is a tremendous sense of loss for any number of reasons that everyone is feeling. And anger is one of those stages. You know, like, like last spring, you know, there was what denial that this isn't happening. I, you know, the, ah, it's a hoax. And I mean, acceptance is the last stage. And, and you go back and forth among these stages. I mean, it's a natural part, part of grieving to go through these stages. Boy, a lot of people just get stuck in anger. And and I think as a culture, that's where we are in so many ways. And and when you're stuck there, it's really hard to be empathetic. It, it's hard to be companionable. It's hard to be there for friends or anyone else uh, because you're, you're dealing mm-hmm. with your own, you know, and that's an intense emotion. And when there's no outlet for it, you know, I, what do you do with that anger when you can't leave the house? 
And unfortunately, part of the problem with that is people drink and abuse their kids and, and whatever. That's what happens to a lot of that anger. Mm-hmm. But, but it, you know, it's it just it feels like there is a boiling point and it's hard to feel celebratory in the midst of that rage. Mm-hmm. And uh, boy, not to bring Thanksgiving and Christmas to a downer, but uh, I, I think that's a lot of what's going on. We all need to have our hearts grow three sizes this oh, season. God. And I don't know that that's going to happen. Oh, this no. is- I'm not going to lie. Uh, a big part of why I wanted to have this episode is I was watching the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey one. And I was like, oh, wait a second. We're having a Grinch Stole Christmas moment. We are. Yeah. Like where there's there's like City Lou who is like, well, what do we care? Why? What is Christmas about anyway? And I'm like, oh, we're doing this. We're doing yep. this. Actually, we are yep. doing the Grinch thing. We are. We are like. And maybe our podcast is City Lou who could be like, hey, 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 yeah. hey, don't do the crappy thing. Um, you're, you're, you're a mean one, Mr. COVID. So, so, if, <laughs> right. so if we all go out but, and sing at the mi- middle of this, just make sure six feet apart, wear your mask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> sure. Why not? But like, it, it, I do think it is, it is the, the, like, it is the Grinch Soul Christmas moment in the sense that like, we have to actually think about what our traditions and what our holidays are for. And when you think about it consciously, I mean, I, I think it's like whether or not the thing you are doing either this year or in other years is the thing, is the tradition that is serving you. Whether it's, are you spending the holidays with the people that actually matter to your life? Whether it's, are you in doing things that are endangering those people? All kinds of stuff. To be stupidly symbolic, you know, is, is, are you celebrating the tinsel or the tree, you know? Yeah. Mm. No, it's also what, what, so. yeah, I mean, what, what, <laughs> what, 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 what's the core? You know, what, what are you just worshiping the symbols or, or what they refer to? The, the problem right. is for a lot of people, they're going to say symbols because that's what they really want. And I mean, because they don't understand what, what the symbols well, refer and to. And as yeah. you said, symbols but, but, are but, but that final scene in, yeah, that, and that, but that final scene in the Grinch is exactly that. It's that entire community recognizing that they don't need their who who blurs and, and whatever all these other things are. Boy, I wish I could remember that off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, it, it, you know, the, the, the Grinch stole all the symbols. Mm-hmm. But in that last day, it wasn't the symbols that mattered. Yeah. And, but, but you're right. It, it, but people don't make that distinction between. Hey, here we go. Because the who's in the So we resolved nothing? Yeah, we've resolved nothing. Well, I mean, this is. Yeah, because I don't know that I. I mean, yes, I, I agree with you. I just. I don't know. I, I think Dr. Seuss is aspirational more so than yeah. realistic. Oh, I think yeah, for a lot yeah. of people, but, they but do it, want the it, symbols it, more than they want the message. Yeah, well, because it, it, sure. it comes back. It's in t- we just turned the episode into semiotics again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as we so often do. As we so often do. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, moral, and, and you're okay, right. so we, we have solved one thing. It's figure out what your freaking symbols actually mean, people. Mm-hmm. Or as we like to say, <laughs> and that's it. I, and that's it. I'm not. A, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, yes, I'm not yeah, opposed to symbols. I, I'm, I'm not opposed to symbols. I, I recognize their value. There's a reason for them. Um, but they become false idols all too often. Yeah, and same thing with I mean, traditions and holidays and rituals, like we were talking about yeah. earlier. Like these are immensely powerful cultural phenomena. They are not useless and they're not bad. Right. But. If you're doing them without recognizing their purpose, then they might be bad, guys. Is this the part where we break out into song um, and sing Faith Hill's Where Are You Christmas? <laughs> oh, God. In the show? <laughs> nope. That's not mm-hmm. a choice. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. It, it's, the, it's the end credit song for How the Grinch Stole oh, Christmas. Okay. No, I know. Okay. I know. I just, nope. I, I, I was making a very subtle and specific joke. Yeah, I just, I, to me, that's not, see, again, and rituals, I'm, older. I'm older. Like, that's not How the Grinch Stole Christmas for me. How the Grinch Stole Christmas for me is a cartoon, and it's only ever been a cartoon. Yeah. And I don't know what that yeah. other thing you guys are talking about. It's, it's, and, and Frankenstein's it's also, monster it narrates it. Yes. It's also true for me because my mother did not like Jim Carrey, so I did not get I, to watch. I agree the, with uh, your mom. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. I like the Jim Carrey version. Uh, it's fun. So we resolved it nothing about the Grinch. Yeah. It also makes me realize how much I've become the Grinch because I'm just like, nope, I just want to stay home and, and eat food and hang out with my cat. So on that note, no, actually, I don't want I don't want your crappy holiday. <laughs> on that note, Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah. Uh, Katya, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at just that nerd kid. Um, but if you're going to spend 10 minutes on the Internet looking at things that will not be helpful to you, uh, I implore you to find your local food bank. instead. Aww, very nice. Follow Johanna. You can find me on Twitter at Hallie Rogers, but I do nothing except <laughs> encourage people to donate to food banks on the show. So I second Katya's motion. And Wayne? 
Do you want to donate to a food bank? Well, after, after after that, this week I was actually going to promote something. Oh, go ahead. Now I can just feel yeah. Now I just feel selfish. Uh, you can do this and and contribute to the food bank. No, just as a, a, a notice to our our regular listeners. Um, finally, after many 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 delays because of COVID and lots of other things, the fourth issue of Hutzpah is now done. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's available locally in at Phantom of the Attic. Uh, there are copies at the Holocaust Museum in if you happen to be there it will be available through amazon soon ish mm-hmm. uh but uh but the fourth issue is out yeah uh, i'll link to that i'll link to the amazon page in the show notes and it will i'm sure okay. I, I don't know if it'll be up this because it came out here two weeks ago real time as we record so it might actually be up yeah. on amazon by the time by the yeah, time the show yeah, up. The, 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 the first three issues are, are still available yes, on amazon absolutely. the fourth one will be relatively soon mm-hmm. So. And also, you know, go to food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Link to the show notes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, all the places, always at Chris Maverick. You can follow the show on all of social media at Vox Popcast or on the show's blog at www.voxpopcast.com where you can leave us a comment. Please leave us a comment on the show, especially I want to know, you know, do you have a good gumbo recipe? Because now that we've done this, I do miss this. <laughs> I do miss the symbol. The symbol. Can, <laughs> can we have a virtual like gumbo shindig? Is that a thing we can I do? I have a gumbo this. recipe for you. Oh, sure. Yeah, Josh has one. Okay. I can send to you. Let's do a, I, let's do a gumbo cause, shindig. Because I do have, I, I do have, I mean, I know how to make gumbo, but like the just, I'm looking for a a prime, just a really good gumbo yeah. recipe. Now, to basically, the, died and, with my and, grandmother's friend. And, now the and, question, and, the question is, seafood or like sausage and chicken oh, or like seafood mm, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, seafood's yeah. the best gumbo yeah, yeah. anyway. Anyway, so, so yeah, I would like a good gumbo recipe, and also you know, let me know if you try my you know try my smoked turkey with the beer can up its ass idea because it is really good again remove the beer <laughs> remove the beer can and throw it away before you slice the turkey just you know little tips like that unless you enjoy the, the festive taste of shrapnel yeah. but if you don't yeah. like turkey like me i have a roast duck recipe that is delicious oh we're gonna have to you know next time on cooking with fox podcast <laughs> anyway. and, and, we, and we and we better get the chance to do some barbecue in your backyard next oh time. god i mean I, I mean well i don't know what you're talking about i've done plenty of barbecue in my backyard no yeah, one yeah. showed up it was weird just you just need like a you just need like a, a trebuchet to just like launch it at people that's that's safe so you can launch the barbecue yeah. at, in, in wayne's general direction anyway if you enjoy this silliness and i certainly hope you do please subscribe otherwise why are you listening yeah, otherwise why are you listening still at the end of the show um please subscribe to us on itunes or stitcher or spotify or wherever the hell else you get podcasts from and do us a favor Leave us a five star review. If you leave a review and not just a rating, that really helps the show. It helps us get more popular. It boosts the algorithm. Goose it's like a Thanksgiving thing. Um, and also, you know, you could just leave. We, we've been giving tips on what you can review us. You know, you could just say, um, "Here's a review. Here, you know, best recipe for smoked turkey." Or here's a gumbo re- recipe, and then also say, "Odd little marks of show eugenics bad." That's what I want to see in the reviews. <laughs> so, so, you know. Um, but leave us a review and give us your thoughts on the blog, you know, in the comments of the show notes. Let us know what you're thinking. Talk to us on Twitter or YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've been getting lots of people. The YouTube channel's been really fun lately. So, you know, please subscribe to us on YouTube. You can listen to the show. Um, you can see enhanced versions where I don't know if there's going to be any enhancements on this episode here. Maybe we'll see, but but you can you, you can you know watch pictures of what we're talking about while we talk. I would like to thank Maximilian of Thoughtform Music for our epic theme song, building ever so more epically and playing us out. I'd like to thank you at home for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.